Right, so moving on now to what I think so far. I've only looked at I've only looked at two days' cards though. Pe- people need to remember that. But this, without a doubt, is the best race I've I've seen at Cheltenham Festival for a long, long time. There is some serious horses in here, without any shadow of a doubt. If if you look at the Cheltenham Festival form of these horses, there is a lot of good, solid form in this race. It is it is a hot renewal of the champion hurdle, Steve. It's fair to say that. Yeah, it's a it's a very hot renewal. Um, with some of the horses in the race, there's a lot of questions to answer. I.e., Faheen, York Hill. Uh, you've got Boover there, the hot favourite that's done nothing wrong. Mighty impressive. However, in lesser competition this year, um, it's certainly going to be an exciting race. Um, Boover there's my fancy. He's been my strong fancy all year round. Oh yeah, definitely. On um, what you've seen with your own eyes. That horse, you can always tell with Garrity when he's on a good horse because he rides it with so much confidence and then he knows what he's got there without any shadow of a doubt, doesn't he? Yeah, he, as you say, he rides with that confidence. He's, he'll ride the horse very quietly. He'll, uh, a fast gallop will suit. He'll, um, he'll try and switch him off and he'll just, he'll just try and latch onto the heels of Fahin approaching the second last and he'll go from there really. But like, it's going to be a fascinating race because obviously Fahim's been a tremendous source over I mean, the years. I can't wait for it. It's really, it's going to be fantastic. Whoever wins is going to prove to be. There's a story there with whoever wins, really. I think if, if I'm expecting really it to be uh, a race where anything could happen, really, because like you say, there, there is so many questions to answer about the, some of the principal players. Even you could say. The favourite has got questions to answer because the trainer has come out and said we we would have preferred our horse to have been tested more, and we feel that he may be a bit complacent. He, can horses be complacent? He he seemed to think that that was an issue with Boover Dare, didn't he? Yeah, I think um, it all come down really to them saying uh, Boover Dare's kind of stuffy horse that needs a lot of work, and I think they were basically saying that. Um, his last run in the contenders hurdle was um yeah, it was, when he beat John it was too easy for, it, that's right John Constable ran well but um Boover Dare, they were saying it was too easy it he was, was. He, he did he hadn't really had a gallop and um i think i think they're just they're just saying that m- maybe it would have been better if he just had a little bit more of a test in the build up to Cheltenham that said last season is um his build up to Cheltenham was far from ideal. Yeah, they he went chasing switched from fences then, yeah. back to Yeah, he did. Yeah, he switched from and come back fences and... back to hurdles. So I think if if there was ever a bad campaign, it might have been last year. So I wouldn't I wouldn't look too much into it, but I can see where they're coming from. But I'm pretty sure tomorrow they'll have Boover there really ready to run a big race. I I'll be massively surprised if he gets beat. It's a good race. I like, There's I like a lot that. Of good, confidence, marks. good confident talk from you there, sir. Just exactly what this show should be about. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're not staking your reputation on the horse, but your reputation will never be in doubt with me personally. But you fancy this horse, don't you? Oh yeah, I massively <laughs> fancy this horse. I, I think, I, I think. There's so many pluses for this horse tomorrow. The the ground, he's in form. Um, he's had no setbacks. I just. I just feel everything's in his favour tomorrow, whereas Horse Hill, they've probably had their best day. Um, York Hill's had a bit of a disappointing season. Good Mellon wasn't Hill. great last time. So there's a lot of others that have got question marks to answer, whereas Boover there, he's for me, he, he's the horse in form. He's, he's the one with the star like, quality. The races he's had last year, this year, I've seen every single one of them. And, and I can honestly say that I don't think he's had a race all season, the old boy. He just makes it look so easy, doesn't he? If he wins like that tomorrow, then fair play to him. Yeah, I must say you're, you're right. He, I don't think he has had a race. Even at um, Kempton at Christmas and the Christmas hurdle. That was, that was even it, more of a joke it, than the race against John Constable, that was. It was. It was in the competition. Brief, John Constable would have won that race like Boover Dare did. Yeah, it was only briefly between the, the second last and the last where Garrett, he got the revs up a little bit. But like it was any briefly f- between the two flights, really, where he just asked him to quicken. Other than that, he was just in second gear all, all the way. He does look a classy. Um, he does look a classy horse, Boover Dare. I will give you that. I will give you that. I will give you very that. Very classy. He does look. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, don't. I don't mind to see it, but I, 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 you know, my, you know, my views. I mean, we've talked about racing. This is only the third show we've been on the radio, but 
we've talked about racing probably for, for years. And you know that you know that I'm a massive your kill fan myself. I, I just hope really that he doesn't doesn't do yours tomorrow really because but that's the game, isn't it? But I honestly think that that horse is a serious horse, and especially round Cheltenham, two out of two. You, you've just mentioned about Boo Bidare's awful campaign last year. I mean. I think York Hill's campaign this year, I think he'd have loved Boobadare's campaign <laughs> last year, wouldn't he? Yeah, I agree. Um, York Hill's not been campaigned well at all this year. Run, three miles first the time up. Bad, himself, has he? Bad. The horse is not helping out. The horse is not helping York Hill, is he? The horse is, uh, is a bit tricky. Let's just say that. York, He's a tricky York, horse, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. York Hill's a tricky horse, certainly. He's... he's He's not an easy horse. He has his own mind. and um, Exactly. And there's, he's not it, helping out. If, and, and, and he might be his own worst enemy again tomorrow. You don't know, do you? No. You, you, can, you can be sure with your kill that you don't know what's going to turn up until you, it turns up. It's, it's, last season, I never thought that once. Last year, you knew. You were, strong on, you were strong on Altior, weren't you? And I was strong on your kill. All season, they both won easy. It's never in doubt in my mind that your kill had win last year. Never in any second, any shadow of any doubt. But this year, it's hard to say. Like you say, you don't know what the old boy's going to do, do you? No, you don't. And it wouldn't surprise me if he trots all over Boover on the bridle. And I don't think, honestly, deep down, it surprised you either. Well, he's obviously a horse with immense talent. He hasn't had. He hasn't had. What they um, say about him? Yeah, he hasn't had. um, He hasn't had the best of seasons up to now, but. Saying no, that, he, he has looks, been campaigned badly looking, and he has been put in the wrong ranks. He's an impossible horse, hasn't he? He's looked impossible. He, yeah, he, he has looked impossible. You can't see what they can do with him. It, it'll, be, it'll be very interesting tomorrow. Personally, I think he'll do well if he finishes in the frame. Um, he's a horse with a lot say, of talent. On form this season, that is, that is, a, that is a, the best you can hope for. Of co- it'll be yeah, a of course. Human, it'll be a superhuman performance, really, for that horse to win tomorrow on the campaign he's had this year. And and you just feel that he's in the race as an afterthought anyway, don't you? Yeah, I'd say... I'd, I'd, say, like, to have seen, I'd like to have seen a, a little run over hurdles before he goes for it or something, just so you can see that the horse is at least showing something. Yeah. But, but what he's shown this year, you cannot back him with any confidence whatsoever, can you? No, you can't. He, as you say, he's shown nothing this year. And um, they're... I think they're going into the champion hurdle with um, more hope than expectation. But um, we're going to find out tomorrow. Um, yes, we are, mate. And it's, I, can't, I, for one, can't wait. I mean, do you think do you think my tent or yours could get a place again? Surely, could he get finishes second every year? It would be foolish for us to ignore him, wouldn't it? Um, he's, it would be. And he's been a tremendous servant to the game. Um, he's come second in three champion hurdles. So he's, a tremendous, he's been a tremendous horse. The ground is against him tomorrow massively, and I do think he'll do well again to finish in the frame. Um, but I wouldn't put it past him. But um, I do think Bouvardere will take all the beating, and I think all the others are just running for minor money, really. <laughs> I love it. Fighting talk again there from Mr. All Press. Jolly good. Well, we have to talk really about Faheen. I mean, we're, we're both of the same opinion, really, I think, unfortunately, that we are witnessing the uh, demise of a once great horse. Not in a literal sense, but I, I think it is fair to say that his form is on the decline. He's missed so much time through injury and been so much time off the track. And uh, I think just think age is getting the best of him. I feel as though he'll run a good, honest, solid race. At best, I don't know what you think of Fahin. Um, yep, yeah, I've been a huge fan of Fahin over the years. A tremendous um, achievements, winning the Neptune and the Champion Hurdle and the Irish Champion Hurdles, obviously. Um, but like you, I feel Fahin's at his best day. I think the injuries will play have played their part, and I I, I feel we will not see a Fahin that we've seen in recent years again. It's a shame. Um, again, I think connections are running tomorrow more hopeful than confident, um, as you would be. And they're just hoping that they'll find the old spark tomorrow. But for me, for me, Fahim will run a good race if he manages to finish in three because um, he, his his runs certainly, certainly has run two runs ago. 
was massively disappointing and his last run was wasn't anywhere near what he's shown previously so um he's got a lot of ground to make up with Bufa there and um I just cannot see him laying a glove on him tomorrow um it's a massive shame in a way because we love seeing true champions come back and win but I just don't think we'll have the fairy tale ending tomorrow with Faheen I'm afraid but but he's been a great horse and um I think a lot of people tomorrow will be excited to see him have one last crack Let's hope so, mate. Let's hope so, because it'd be nice to see. I mean, I've, done, I've, I've looked at the race. I've done the maths there. You, you've said that you don't think for he, my tent, or yours, or your kill, or finishing the first three. So who do you, who do you see the main dangers to be there, then? Or the um, others in the race that you like that? Per- personally, I, d- I don't feel there is a danger to be there. Obviously, he's got to turn up and run his race oh, to win. Oh, fighting talk again there. However, with the, as far as, like, the place... The uh, the places to be filled. I think I think they're wide open. Um, like I'm not saying our Faheen or York Hill um, can't finish in the first three because they're there to be they're there to be taken. But um, I just feel the others are running four, second, and third. Personally, I'd I'd put Mellon in there to finish in three. I think they'd have a worthy each way chance. It's difficult to say really because. Um, there's a lot of horses with question marks. Because you're, so you're so strong on the favourite, really, as well. That don't help, does it, when you're looking at horses? When you're strong on a favourite, the last thing you want to be doing is looking at ways it can get beat, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And with the question marks, um, with all the other horses, it, it's which it's just which horse is going to show what on tomorrow in these conditions as well, which are not going to be suitable for a lot of them. It's, it's, just, difficult. it's just difficult to really foresee what's going to happen. But... I, I am confident Bouverdale will win. I, I just, I just think everything's gone right for him. Where these these other horses, they're not quite. There's not quite the strength in depth between them. Where maybe in recent years, where we've had Faheen, a peak Faheen, it would have been more of an ask, a more of a question for Bouverdale to answer. But I don't think tomorrow he's going to have too much problems with these other horses but we'll we'll find out tomorrow not long now not long now sir And they're off, away racing for the 2018 Unibet champion hurdle and the 2015 winner Foheen straight into an early lead from Charlie Parks in the red cap. Identity Thief over in third, Bouver Dare fourth over on the far side in the hands of Barry Geraghty, green and yellow hoops, white cap. They're followed by Mellon, then Elgin further back, York Hill on the inside, Keen, Mick Jazz followed by Shitabello, and then John Constable on the outside and Wicklow Brave is just about the early back marker as they make the long run on towards flight number two and Charlie Parks now just taking a narrow lead over Foheen. Charlie Parks possibly playing a pacemaking role here for stable companion Boo Verdeer as they approach the flight in front of the stands. In third identity thief in the maroon jacket on the outside of Boo Verdeer. Then Mellon in yellow sleeves in fifth. After these is Elgin in the Elite Racing Club colours. White black cap on the inside of Mick Jazz in the blue and orange jacket. York Hill round the inside from Shutterbello. Then Wicklow Brave and the nose bandit John Constable making their way slightly uphill now towards the back straight and Charlie Parks just out in front from Foheen in second. Bouverdeer round the inside of Identity Thief. The gamble Don Mellon is back in fifth, followed by Elgin. Then Mick Jazz to the outside of York Hill, and they're followed, held up at the back by Wicklow Brave, by Chitabello and John Constable as they now race downhill and into the back straight and on towards the next flight of hurdles. Charlie Parks by about a length, maybe just under the Foheen in second, tracked by Bouverdeer as they approach this next flight. 
Uh, they take it quickly from Identity Thief and Mellon over in fourth and fifth, and then Elgin back in sixth place from Mick Jazz. And then towards the rear still Yorkin and John Constable and Wicklow Brave as they head on towards the next line of hurdles. And they're getting a little bit spread out. The pace appears to have lifted. And Charlie Parks is pressing on with Faheen. They are three lengths clear of Bouverdeer in third. Then Identity Thief and Mellon, followed by Mick Jazz on the outside. A slight mistake there from Faheen in second place and dropped off uh, Charlie Parks. A good four or five lengths off the leader now. And Bouverdeer is within a length and a half of Faheen in third place. Mellon is fourth, then Identity Thief. Mick Jazz on the outside of Elgin, John Constable out wide, Chittabello and then York Hill and Wicklow Brave as they jump the flight going uphill on the far side and Charlie Parks is a clear leader from Faheen, a good six or seven lengths down in second. No, no move yet from Barry Geraghty on Bouverdeer in third. Mellon is in fourth place. Identity Thief coming under a little bit of pressure. Mellon goes well round the inside. Mick Jazz still going well and then Elgin as they reach the top of the hill in the champion hurdle with three flights left to jump. Starting downhill, Charlie Parks out clear of Faheen. Bouverdeer in third, Mellon on the inside. Then Mick Jazz and Identity Thief from Elgin. Wicklow Brave making a little bit of a move on the outside in the purple jacket, jumping three out. Charlie Parks nearly joined again by Faheen, who is a little untidy. Mellon a bit short of room on landing. Bouverdeer coming through to nearly join Faheen. The horses are almost touching each other. Mellon on the inside side still swinging along as they race towards the second last and Bouverdeer taking it up here Bouverdeer, Mellon on the inside going with him though, Mellon and Bouverdeer, Mick Jazz just in behind them, still yet to be asked a serious question Elgin running on for Heen under pressure Wicklow Brave, they turn for home Mellon on the inside of Bouverdeer chased by Mick Jazz and they're kicking away from Elgin and Wicklow Brave as they head towards the final flight in the champion hurdle Bouverdeer taking a fractional lead Mellon coming under pressure from Paul Townend at the final flight. Bouverdeer and Mellon, they were in there together. They landed as one. Geraghty goes for Bouverdeer. Mellon is finding plenty. They race up towards the line. Head to head, toe to toe. Two, two great hurdlers racing to the line. And Bouverdeer just retains his title. Bouverdeer just from Mellon. Then Mick Jazz back in third. And Identity Thief back in fourth. Smooth as silk last year, he's had to tough it out this time, but he becomes the first horse since Hardy Eustace to win back-to-back -back champion hurdles, a seventh win in this race for Nicky Henderson, more success in this for JP McManus and Barry Geraghty, who rode Jeski to win this race for the same owner, wins this year, last year he was on Yanworth, he had to watch as Noel Feely steered Boober dare to victory, not so this time, but at the last it looked as though Mellon might have his measure. Mellon, the talk of the town in 2017, unconsidered this time, has run his personal best and how. He has pushed Bouverdeer all the way. And Mick Jazz it was who came home in third. He's done it again, but he needed every bit of guts and tenacity to do so this time, Steve. He did, and Mellon not helped by his stable companion, three out when he tried to cut the inside of four. He and got slightly impeded. Yeah, the, we, we haven't seen the brilliance, if you like, of Bouvier Day today, but we've seen the guts. He's had to find plenty up the running, and he found a lot. So, you know, you, you can't say it's a vintage performance by the winner, but it's a very, very gutsy performance. And whatever ailed Mellon last time out, this is much more the one we saw in the international and the one who ran the Supreme last year. That is a better one.